Well, hello, my name is Dr. Dan Grissom. I'm an assistant professor at Azusa Pacific University in the computer science department. And today I'm just gonna uh, give a, a brief video tutorial on how to kind of just get started with Java programming. Specifically, we're gonna uh, walk you through how to install the Eclipse um, Integrated Development Environment, IDE for short, and the Java Development Kit, which is required by Eclipse, and uh, JDK for short for the Java Development Kit. Um, this specific tutorial is going to be done on a brand new, fresh copy of Windows 10. So I figure it's uh, it's July. It's uh, I'm sorry, September of 2015 at the time of recording this. Uh, most everyone that's uh, taking a new programming class is probably going to have Windows 10 installed on their machines, or they're going to have a um, Mac uh, with Mac OS X on it. If, you, if that is the case for you, uh, you should be seeing a pop-up link on this video. Just kind of takes you to another video that someone else made that's a, a pretty good walkthrough for how to install um, Eclipse and the JDK on your Mac. Okay, and then re if you are on the Mac, rejoin us later and I'll walk you through how to, later on the video at the very end, I'll walk you through how to um, basically create your first project. <laughs> okay. But for those of us who are on Windows, uh, let's get started. Um, so if, if um, an integrated development environment is basically a program that helps us create programs, okay? Specifically, we're working with Java, so we're gonna look at Java integrated development environments. If I open up a Google browser and just type in Java IDE, and click on the first link, we'll see a link of a number of different IDEs out there. You can see this specific page brings up about 11. Um, the top three ones, NetBeans, Eclipse, and IntelliJ, are, are probably some of the most popular that are out there right now. NetBeans is kind of an old school, uh, one of the earlier Java IDEs out there. Um, IntelliJ is one of the newer ones out there. So IntelliJ has a lot of new great features. Um, however, despite that, we're going to use Eclipse. Eclipse is also very feature rich. Um, Eclipse has been around for a while. It's very mature and it's, uh, it's very well supported. Uh, I've used Eclipse to um, write C++ code, Python code, all kinds of stuff. And, and some of that's true of other IDEs as well. But um, just in my experience, I found that um, if, if I'm ever doing a new language or some kind of specialty project, they'll have little plugins um, that will work in Eclipse. And so if you've taken the time to learn Eclipse with Java, um, the chances are you're going to minimize the amount of time you're going to need uh, to relearn a new IDE program in the future. Uh, Eclipse is great. Um, uh, there's probably philosophical arguments to use it and to not use it, but for all practical purposes, it is a great IDE and it's uh, the one we're going to use uh, for this class. So um, I'll leave that up there for now. You can see uh, Mars is the current version. Uh, we're actually going to download it through another website, which makes it just a tad bit easier and more reliable. So I'm going to go to, uh, if you open up your browser to www.ninite.com, N-I-N-I-T-E. Um, you'll see a, a, a web page load up that has basically a bunch of check boxes with different programs beside it. So if you've never been to this website, it's a really neat website. Uh, it basically allows you, uh, uh, this is especially useful if you have a brand new computer or you just uh, reformatted your machine and have a fresh copy of Windows. It essentially allows you to check all the, uh, basically uh, out of all these commonly used programs, it allows you to just check it to download one installer which will uh, automatically give you the latest version of the program as well as it'll uh, kind of check all the do not install toolbar uh, check boxes that come in some of these programs. So uh, this is really nice. I could actually download an installer and give it uh, directly to you and uh, you would uh, then click on that installer and it would go out and download Eclipse um, and the uh, Java Development Kit or whatever else we're going to uh, focus on. So um, with this tutorial, we are going to focus over on this column over here, the developer tools. Um, so we want, obviously, Eclipse. So I want to go ahead and check that. If I hover over, it'll show you which version, uh, version 4.5. Um, and 4.5 is that Mars. This is kind of the special code, uh, more popular name Mars for, you know, 4.5. And you'll also notice that it says requires Java. So uh, to, to run Eclipse, we actually need Java installed on our machine. And to write code, um, and this is right here, Java 8 runtime, um, but to actually write code, we need what's called the JDK, the Java Development Kit. So the Java Development Kit actually contains 
the Java runtime environment, the JRE. So don't get too confused there. The JDK is, is the biggest, baddest thing. It has everything involved. So I'm going to click this 64-bit version right here. Um, uh, it's 2015. Almost everyone's going to have 64-bit processors and 64-bit operating systems, whether you're using Mac or Windows. Um, if not, uh, this this appears to be the 32-bit version that you can give a try, but I would go ahead just click the 64-bit version and Eclipse and go ahead and click the installer. So um, again, this is going to go and grab, um, right now I'm just downloading it, and once it's downloaded I can run it. And uh, the program is now basically going to go out and grab the latest versions of Eclipse. It's going to download and install that, and it's going to download and install the latest version of uh, the JDK, which happens to be 8 point something at the moment. So we'll wait for this to um, download. Uh, so just while we're waiting for it to download and install, um, a little background on the JDK. So the, the JDK and the J, JRE, the Java Runtime Environment, what, what I'm downloading and installing right now, basically contains a bunch of uh, kind of just files for Java, but uh, what, what we would call library. So think about when you go to a, a physical library, um, there's, there's a bunch of books of information uh, that we don't really know. Right? We don't really have this knowledge in our minds, but we could go and open up these books and we could learn about things and then essentially use that knowledge to our advantage. That way we don't have to do the research to um, figure out figure out that knowledge on our own, it's just kind of available for us to, to consume. So this JDK is very similar. The JDK contains a bunch of uh, already written uh, code and libraries and, and all kinds of stuff um, that essentially we can just reuse. So, um, uh, so essentially this is kind of just the background stuff that we need to um, not only run Java programs, but to write our own. Uh, so right now it's installing the JDK. Um, I'll just let this run for a second and uh, we'll catch back up when it when it's done. All right, there we go. So we're done with that. Um, so you'll notice, the first thing you'll notice is that it just created this Eclipse icon on our desktop. So if you wanna know kind of where it installed all these files, just open up this PC, go into your, probably your C drive, and you'll notice that there is now an Eclipse folder. If you open it up, you'll see the actual Eclipse executable in there. Okay, so we can go ahead and double click this Eclipse uh, program, you'll see it, it gives you the version of Eclipse, so Mars, which is uh, 4.5. Um, if you run this installer and you, you watch this tutorial and you run the 9.9 installer in a few years, you will get for sure a different version of Eclipse. All right, so the first thing that pops up is the Workspace Launcher, okay? If you don't see the Workspace Launcher, um, and instead you see some kind of error message talking about Java needs to be installed or something about Java in an error. Essentially what that means is that other thing, the JDK, was not properly installed. Uh, you have to install the JDK before you try to run Eclipse. So if you're doing this manually and you, you download Eclipse first and then you try to run it before uh, installing the JDK, uh, you are going to get issues. All right, so what it's asking you now, the very first thing it asks you is the workspace. So essentially this is saying, where do I want to store all of my Java programming files? Um, so I always like to, and what I would recommend is just creating uh, your own folder at this point. So I would go to, for instance, this PC, C drive, and I always like to just create something right in the C drive. So I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it code repository, okay? So I like to, uh, when possible, leave out the spaces because uh, some some uh, 
some programs and things like that have trouble uh, reading the space. It should be fine, but just a little thing. Um, so I'm going to call this code repository. So this is just some repository, some folder where I'm going to keep all of my uh, code for all the different projects I'm doing. So if I open it up, obviously there's nothing in there yet. Uh, I just created it. So I'll just kind of move this up in the corner. And now I'm going to go and browse to this directory I just created. So this PC, um, C drive, and then code repository. So click OK, and then click OK again. And at this point, you'll see it's creating stuff in this code repository folder that we have. It created this uh, metadata folder, which is just kind of some background stuff for Eclipse. OK, I'm going to kind of leave this up so we can kind of see what's happening in the background. So the first thing that happens is it brings up this welcome screen. I'm just going to close this. And, and your, your Eclipse, if you've never run it before, should look a little something like this. Okay. Um, one of the main things is this package explorer on the left. Um, so if you don't have the package explorer for some reason, you can always get it back by clicking window, per, uh, show view, and then package explorer. And it will basically kind of re, uh, re-display this package explorer. So in the Package Explorer, I want to just go ahead and right click and then click New Java Project. Okay, um, I'm going to give this project a name. We'll just go ahead and call it Hello World. We'll just kind of do the, the typical first program. And then everything else I should just be able to leave blank. You see it's going to create a new folder um, in Code Repository slash Hello World. It's going to create that folder. It's going to use our uh, Java runtime environment, so on and so forth. So go ahead and just click Finish should be good and you'll see it does do that it creates hello world it has all these other folders in there as well okay and if i go back to my package explorer i click this little arrow it's going to kind of show me what else is in there so you'll see the source directory again over here if i go into the source directory you'll see there's nothing there now um, i want to basically create what's called a new class okay so at this point i don't want you to worry about what a class is or what all this stuff means you just want to kind of get you set up to make sure that you have your environment set up now the rest we'll talk about classes in lecture and in lab but for now just kind of make sure that everything is working as you see in the video so i'm going to say um, i'm going to right click on source and then i'm going to click new class okay and i can call this this class and give it the name of whatever i want i'm just going to call it my class okay maybe my first class okay my first class and then I'm gonna go and check public static void main okay so again don't don't worry about what this means just go ahead and click it for now and click finish you'll see that it added this my first class Java this default package in the source directory and then over in my file system you can see it also created this dot uh, Java file okay so what I'm gonna do is essentially I am going to just write a single line of code Okay, and I'll write a single line of code, and you'll 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 start to see what the IDE does. You'll see that it actually highlighted these certain words purple, while some are black, some are bolded, and some are not. Um, and then watch this when I start typing, I'll say system dot, and when I do that, it actually starts to give me a bunch of suggestions. So as I type, it kind of narrows it down. And it, it kind of just gives me recommendations, okay? So I can um, use this to, to help myself program so I don't have to remember quite as much. It's a really nice feature. Um, so I'm just gonna type in hello world, okay? And this is my first program, it's just one line of code, okay? So now that I have written my first program, I need to try and run my first program. Okay, so if I click right here, I'm gonna make this full screen so we can see it. This little run play button, I just simply click it and it's going to actually pop up down here with this console, this wasn't here before. And this is essentially the output of my program. So you can see it says, hello world. If I go ahead and add some exclamations and I try and run again, uh, the first time we do this, it's actually gonna show up. See what happened was um, I, I changed the program and notice it added this star. This means that I have changed the program since I've last saved it. I've changed this file since I've last saved it. So what it's doing is it's saying, hey, you, you actually changed the program. Did you mean to save it before trying to run it? And so if I just click this button, uh, check this box, always save resource, essentially what's gonna happen is every time I make a change, it's gonna automatically save it before I try and run it. That way I ensure that I'm getting the most recent version. 
of my program being run. So I would recommend checking this. You only have to do it once. Um, hello world. You can see if I add a whole bunch, now it's going to automatically save it and run it. Okay. All right. So um, congratulations. You've successfully installed uh, Eclipse in the Java Development Kit. Uh, you have created your first project in your first class, and you've also run your first Hello World program. Uh, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, thank you, and have a great day.